Now in our sixth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Ladies and gentlemen, out to the uh, West Coast, to San Francisco, California, um, and uh, our old friend Larry Bubbles Brown. Hello, Larry. Hello, Alex. Uh, having a wonderful time ingesting <laughs> smoke. <laughs> ingesting smoke? Yeah, you've had those fires out there. Oh, uh, yes, it was horrible. Just uh, really bad. So this will probably lead to lung cancer. But... Well, even though, even though. Um, the the uh, smoke is happening upstate. It is wafting down into San Francisco, right? Yeah, and I it was really I could smell it here when I woke up. Then I went over to Marin. It was really bad over there. So. Yeah. So was Marin it's, on fire at all, or was Marin? Okay? No, it's it's like you said. It's it's north above there, but it blow the smoke blows all the way down here. Yeah. So. Yeah. Oh boy, that's not fun. No, and. Uh, I was reading. Didn't a lot of people die from lung cancer from uh, from nine eleven? Like a few years well, later. Yeah, but the- there was asbestos in there, and you know a lot of other things too. Uh, and you know they what they're doing is they're still um, having people make claims, so that if if someone was around when nine eleven happened, and then it turned out that they got cancer. Uh, the um, the the general response to all of that is well I guess it was from nine eleven but it might not have been you know so we, mm-hmm. we we don't know completely I've never been able to figure that one out uh, yeah I mean uh, uh, firemen uh, people who were on the pile as they call it uh, coming down with cancer absolutely absolutely. So uh, other than that, how are you doing? Are you okay? Yes, I uh, like uh, it's just this is a boring way to live with everything closed. But yeah, how are they? Uh, how what are they doing in San Francisco? Are they still closing everything down? Well, this week they're supposed to start opening up a few things. Uh, it goes county by county, but uh, I think we're going to be able to get haircuts now. So yeah. I would imagine the tongue kissing is still out. <laughs> it's very hard. It's very hard to get laid during a pandemic. Yeah. No, I think it would be easier to get laid during a pandemic if you already had the virus and then had the antibodies. Yeah, if you could prove it, you yeah, that would be uh, you'd clean up. <laughs> you clean up. But how are you going to prove that? <laughs> yeah, no, but you, you can say, hey, look, uh, here, I have this uh, test I took. Uh, see, here's my antibody <laughs> test. You know, uh, you could probably start that into a whole new prostitution ring. Men without uh, without corona or without with antibodies. But yeah, we, 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 we could start a stable of men and uh, service women all over. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Gee, gee we, we missed out, didn't we? I know. We always bad timing on our part. Now do you know anybody who's had the corona? I don't know one person, no. No. I don't either. I don't think I know anybody. Maybe it was overrated. It, no. No. Please don't say that. Otherwise people will get the idea they can tongue kiss. <laughs> well the latest C D C report was that only of the hundred and seventy thousand people have died, only Nine thousand died of corona. That the other deaths were, they had corona, but they had at least two other things. Well, yeah, but it was the comorbidities that made you more uh, susceptible to dying from it. Okay, but that doesn't mean that if if he didn't get the coronavirus, you would still be alive. You get my point? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, comorbidities were always a factor. 
a lot of fat people. If you were fat, forget it. You're dying. Okay? Uh, if you're obese. Uh, uh, and, uh, you know, they're just all, all the what they call the comorbidities, which were the underlying factors for the deaths. But, uh, you know, that's why younger people didn't die of it, most of them, because they, uh, you know, they didn't have any of the comorbidities. They were pretty healthy and, you know, they had a fairly stable immune system. But you take somebody my age who has had cancer, uh, and uh, I'm, you know, I'm in that high-risk group. So, um, yes, I mean, that's very stupid. The CDC has been making some very stupid statements lately, you know. You uh, don't know what to believe. Well, no, the also, late, if you, apparently, if you're a male, you got a much higher chance of dying from this too. They made they made a really idiotic statement a couple of days ago that if un, un, if you've been exposed to somebody with COVID, but you don't have any symptoms, you don't need to take the test. What? It didn't it didn't they ever hear of of what we call people who are asymptomatic who give it to other people? Yeah. You know. So uh, so okay, don't don't get your skivvies in an uproar. Don't go and get the test because our president honestly believes the reason we have so many cases is because we have so many tests. And if we did less <laughs> testing, we'd have less cases. <laughs> I guess that's true. <laughs> I, it, it's absolutely true. It's also sheer stupidity, but it is true. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm amazed at the stupidity in in most of this that's been going on. You know, but I mean, th- this is something. This is something I suppose we'll remember for the rest of our lives. Your life being probably. Very, yes, that'll be very short. So. No, your your life is probably longer than mine. I mean, I'm 80. I, I probably could go in the next 10 years, right? Uh, what's the uh, what's the average? What's the life expectancy for an American now? I think it's. I, I think it's for a male. I think it's still like what, 80, 75, or something like that. I think it might have been bumped up to 78. But... Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, well, I don't know. I wish I were dead. So. <laughs> well, I do read, be reading these. Uh, you know the when they started making buildings in the 70s to conserve energy? Yeah. The uh, ventilation on those is so poor, that's become a big factor in uh, this uh, whole virus thing, too. Well, you have, you know, in the old days, when you had an office building, your the way they cooled an office building was you opened the windows and you had cross-ventilation, right? right? Mm-hmm. But now these things are hermetically sealed. So if you go in there and somebody's got COVID... And sneezes, somebody a block away on that building could probably get it, you know? Yeah, I just heard that in, uh, today. Of This guy was saying on the news about how that was, they were built to conserve energy in the 70s, which was a good idea. But now that it's, they're so much more toxic than uh, the old buildings. Oh, absolutely. And, and there are, uh, here in New York, uh, the governor is suggesting for restaurants that might want to reopen for indoor eating uh, that uh, they get these pure air purifiers with a HEPA filter that does filter out the coronavirus, or so they believe. Yeah, he had, the guy mentioned the HEPA filter, right? Yeah, but it's a, it's a it's a like a fifteen or something like that, and it's very expensive, and not all air purifiers, all not all air purification systems can handle it. Okay, so that's the problem. But so far as restaurants opening up, it's really nice to see all these outdoor dining areas they've created that really are kind of pretty and you know. They've made them look nice and so on. And it's working great. I mean, the restaurant I normally go to had almost the same amount of business outdoors that they once had indoors. Okay? And that's great. And I said to them, 
So business is good? He says, yeah, very good, very good. And I said, what happens when winter hits? Because, <laughs> you know, in California, yeah. winter could hit and maybe it could still eat outdoors. You know, except on a Someday, radio. sure. Yeah. yeah. But, and they just get those heaters, you know, and things like that. But uh, here in New York, the dead of winter... 13 degrees? Oh, let's go for some outdoor dining. Impossible. So who knows what's going to happen to the business for these people once that happens again. You know. Yeah, or they, somebody wanted me to ask you. They said, is it true that people are fleeing New York? Or is that just I don't know why they're high? fleeing New York because New York is, in fact, the safest place to be in the entire United States. Uh, we have, you know, we do a lot of testing, uh, and, uh, the, the highest number of tests in one day, I think was a hundred thousand. All right. Jesus. Uh, and it, we, but usually we're up around anywhere between 55 and that hundred thousand. And in three weeks, we have never gone above one uh, percent uh, infection rate. That means of all the tests done, one percent infection rate. And in one case, a couple of days ago, it was a point six two or something like that. So we have a very low infection rate. Um, plus, yesterday in the state of New York, or day before yesterday, because this was yesterday's statistic, in the state of New York, one death. One? <laughs> wow. One day. Was hundreds, wasn't it, a few months ago? And the amount of hospitalizations was down to something like, I don't know, 450 or something like that. In the whole state, people are hospitalized for COVID. So the best place to be right now would be New York State, but everybody, please stay away. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But, uh, yeah, they are fleeing the cities. There's, there's no question about it. I uh, I know a lot of people who've moved to places in New Jersey and in, in the country, or upstate New York in the country. Uh, if I had my choice, I would do that too. I mean, that would be ultimately the safest place. Although, eat what is it? Western New York has a, has had a spike happen that they're worried about. Well, they're just moving because of the virus, or the. Uh, I think they're moving because, you know, to begin with, I mean, if you came to the city for all the great restaurants, you know, you're living here for the great restaurants, wipe that off your bucket list, okay? Because these Wipe re- Broadway off the bucket list. Oh, uh, yeah. Broadway shows? Forget it. There is no Broadway. You know, when will all this be coming back? Who fucking knows? I don't think anybody knows, you know. Uh, and it, it, it's, it's kind of, it's kind of sad. I mean, we're all, we're all, um, we're in this, uh, situation that's really quite getting quite dire in this whole country. I mean, yeah, you it's, can't it, make money. Well, in San Francisco, aren't things are pretty terrible, aren't they? Well, people are leaving here like crazy. They're leaving here because they can work from home now. So you move and pay half the rent and, uh. Yeah. But we had, uh, last month, uh, a month ago, we had 12 units in the building. Five were vacant. So. Wow. Wow. I bet the rents are going down like crazy. There's, apparently, they're dropping, and uh, there goes my buyout. <laughs> oh, oh, you mean the buyout where they wanted to buy you out of your apartment? Yeah, that, I'm sure that'll be worthless pretty soon. So. Uh, uh, they offered you a buyout? Not, not in years, no, but... Uh, Apparently, if you go to them, and even though it's illegal to go ask if you do it, that most of these building owners will, if you're paying cheap rent, will give you something to leave. Yeah. Um, it's, uh, yeah, well, you know. Um, yeah, I Maybe it's time for me to move back to San Francisco. I mean, if the rents are getting that cheap. You, know. you should. Yeah. And have they re-rented those apartments that were emptied out in the last? Uh, there's, there's three that are still empty. Wow. 
Because in San Francisco, the occupancy rate was pretty bad, wasn't it, at one point? I mean, like pretty 99%, low. yeah, for a while there. Oh, boy. Well, New York, same thing. But uh, I think New York is a little cheaper to get an apartment. And uh, it's it's just been it's been insane. It's just been insane. Maybe we're there. heading towards a huge recession or depression. Uh, I think we're already there, my friend. Yeah, I heard uh, this guy in finance was saying that you know everyone, oh the stock market's going crazy. He said it's not. He said there's, he said there's like five companies that are leading this stock market drive, like Apple and Amazon. He said mm-hmm. that's it. Most of the companies are not making money and they're in really bad shape, and the banks are in horrible shape. Well, on that note, that happy that happy note, note. <laughs> we end another episode of getting depressed with Bubs. <laughs> Sell an apple. <laughs> Thanks, Bubs. We'll talk to you next Thanks, week. Okay. Bye-bye. Now in our sixth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Well, hello there. How are you? What's happening? How's your wife and kids? Is everything okay? All right, fine. Uh, I don't see anybody in our waiting room right now. Hmm. There, well, there is one person, and it says Red Fred Socks. And I, you know, that makes me suspicious. Let me just see for a moment who that might be. Uh, let me admit them and see if it comes up. Okay. There we go. Oh, oh. Who is that? Experience of many years in the House of the Senate. Manubi. Wait, wait a minute. Will you turn? Will uh, you turn down your audio? There is something you have on. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Sorry. I, sorry, Trump doesn't know that. Yeah. And oh, that makes uh, a big uh, difference. Turn that off, will you? Now we can't hear you. Okay. Well, I don't know what that is, but anyway, Robert Natali is here. We'll see if we can get Fred Sox going hello robert how are you i'm fine alex yourself yeah uh hold on a moment fred have you have you got any audio there can you turn on your audio there you go okay are you there now fred yes yeah where are you calling from fred we've never had you on the program before no i'm a i'm a first time i'm calling from north carolina oh okay from north carolina well hello yes i live here now but i used to live in new york yeah. Oh, it sounds like it. <laughs> <laughs> How could you tell? <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, oh, you're no. using, you know what you, you ought to do? Uh, we always say this is like a, a thing we have to teach people to do. Um, uh, you're, you have a light in back of you, so we can't yeah. see your face that well. If you could move your, your camera or whatever okay. away from that light, you see, if you can move to another place, because I, I think you've got either you, a laptop. You stay right where you are. There we go. Well, that's my, that's better. It's just dark. Um, yeah. Uh, well, you, wait a minute. I got another one. Uh, wait a minute. Turn Let's... somewhere where you're where you're facing the light, but the light isn't facing us. This is cinematography one, right? Yes. Uh, wait a minute. There we. Go. Oh, yeah. How's that's that? Much better. Much better. All right. Uh, okay, ladies and right. gentlemen. Fred <laughs> Socks. Is that really your name, Fred? No, it isn't. Oh. My name's Jim. Jim. Oh. <laughs> well. but, but they call you Tommy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> For short. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> but everyone knew him as Nancy. That's yeah. right, exactly. Yeah. 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 So yeah. listen, there's one thing I just want to tell you, Alex. Yes. Is that when I grew up in New York City. Here we go with the when I grew up in New York, I used to listen to you when I was a child, right? Wrong. Wrong. Okay. <laughs> when I grew up in New York City, I grew up in Harlem. Oh, okay. Yes. That- I lived on 135th Street in Amsterdam Avenue. Right, right. And I believe, if you still are, you're living in Harlem now, aren't you? Yes, I'm at 116th Street yeah. and 7th right. Avenue. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, but it's much different than it probably was when you were living here. It may actually be flipped. (laughs) Well, it hasn't flipped that much, but it's flipped a lot. Right, exactly. Yeah. 
Well, well so now I will admit that I listened to you when I was a little fella. <laughs> oh, okay. I knew I was going to get that. I knew I was going to get that. <laughs> I'm getting just. Yeah. I just wanted to avoid the uh, ribbing that you would give me if I uh, admitted that first. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh, hello to uh, uh, Robert, and hello to Jeff Stein, and hello to Josh Wheeler, and hello to Kevin yes. Stopper. Hi, guys. Uh, these are these are the rest of the members of the Citizen Panel tonight. Right. And uh, uh, here we go. You know, we wait for other people to call, and we'll be uh, we'll be off to the races. I know. I so was. Get, we, I was getting. Have we started Trump bashing yet? Uh, uh, you know, I'm getting so tired of Trump bashing because it's. Yeah, it, me it, too. It's like it's like shooting fish in a barrel. Yeah. You know. The only it, thing I'm more tired of is Trump himself. Well, mm -hmm. that too. That too. Yeah. Um, I um uh, no. I was. I was. Just, I, I'm just depressed tonight. <laughs> what else is new? Uh, I'm depressed tonight because I'm looking at this new thing that my union is giving us for insurance, and it makes no sense at all. They, 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 uh, they talk about a health retirement account or something like that, and the money is taken from there, and it doesn't make any sense to me at all. You know, just tell me, where do I sign up, you know? And if, if, if you suck too much, maybe I'll just go out and get a good supplemental plan in the marketplace and, and leave it at that, right? Like, what do you use, Jeff, at a, as a supplemental plan? Uh, turn on your mic. Turn on your mic. What? Um, yeah, I'm not sure the name of the company, but it's a regular... Uh... Like Aetna or somebody like that. Yeah, right? It's one of those, and you know, it's expensive. Let's put it that way. Yeah, I know. It, it, but yeah. how how expensive is expensive? Do you know? I don't know. Yeah. I'm gonna ask my financial expert. Yeah, I mean, it's just you know, it's just uh, it was beautiful the way it was, but they they got my union decided to get out of the uh, doing this directly and. Uh, so I'm being, uh, you know, I'm, 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 I, I, I gotta, you know, have some kind of insurance, and I just hope I can kind of put, cobble together a plan that's like the one we had, you know. But it, it's like this health retirement retirement account or something that you draw from, and uh, mm -hmm. you know, but then you pay all different premiums to all different com companies, you know. So I none of it makes sense to me. Uh, so, I think your insurance uh, is just that company uh, is getting more and more expensive. Well, no. What happened was uh, SAG-AFTRA had its own plan it had created, and it was a terrific plan. We paid about two thousand dollars a year, and we got twenty five hundred dollars dental, and you know there were a lot of copays and stuff. So mm -hmm. I have to admit that was a little daunting. Uh, so now they're coming up with this thing where we go to this place, it's called SAG-AFTRA VIA, whatever, and you go there, and all they are probably is like insurance salesmen, you know, and they're simply saying, well, you want a, 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 a prescription drug plan? Here's what we got. You know, here's what's available. Oh, you want your, uh, your dental? Well, you can get one of two plans, one for $1,500 a yeah, or another for twenty five hundred or whatever, you know, and they're probably just selling us insurance is what it turns out to be. Uh, and I just don't know if if this plan is meant for us, you know. So, I'm I'm gonna have my wife go look at other possible options because her company will pay for it. So, you know, it doesn't matter what option we take. So, but it, you know, having to deal with this uh, is depressing because um, especially at my age I need health care and the fact that we don't have a good health system in this country we don't have Medicare which pays a hundred percent instead what we're doing is we got Medicare that takes care of 80 percent and the other 20 percent has to be taken care of by insurance companies who are robbing people blind Okay, uh, and, and, and we have to 
pay 20% of it? Yeah, 20% of your Medicare pays 80. Okay. There's a 20% that you got to pay for, or you go okay. get supplemental insurance. Um, we had supplemental insurance w at work with Marjorie's company, which was Oxford. Yeah, but they, I know. But they didn't have a supplemental plan. So the, her company had to pay $20,000 a year for them to pay 20% of our costs. Yeah, yeah, because they didn't have a supplemental well, plan. times 12 is about, what, 4,000? Four or five thousand dollars a year, yeah, yeah, that's about right. I was paying two to SAG after it, but as I say, you know, I mean, I was paying out of my own pocket. God, I, I, I must have paid a couple of thousand dollars, you know. So if I don't have as much out of pocket. Okay, then maybe we'll be okay. But I don't know. I just, I'll just, I'll, I'll just uh, get sick and make the state pay for it. Yeah. Reminds me of the Woody Allen movie, Take the Money and Run, where Woody's character commits a crime and gets caught, and his punishment is to have to spend two days in a hot box with an insurance salesman. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. But. You know, here here we've got a system in this country where if you get if you get sick, if you if you if you get sick, um, if you get sick, you know it's it, it, you're, you're up shit creek, okay? Uh, I mean, you, you can I suppose put yourself at the mercy of the state who will somehow get you something, but you know you want to live, okay? And I mean, I've got, you know, I've got this whole cancer thing and everything like that, and I'd like it to be taken care of, you know, and I, I just, I, I just, you know, I'm, I'm fed up. I'm just completely fed up. Yes, Jeff. Yep. You have cancer. paying $4,000 a year. 4000 for you, both you and your wife. No. Oh. Just for me. Just for you? Wow. God bless it. 4000 a year? Medicare for all. Medicare. Yep. Pam pays more. Huh? Couldn't agree more, Mr. Wallace. Remember, she's under 65. I mean, we're paying uh, more now than it costs for Medicare for all. We're paying trillions of dollars more. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yep. for Medicare, I pay out of my Social Security something like $105 a month or something like that. I don't know how much it is. But for, so for 80% is costing me like a, a, a hundred and change every month. And then for the other... 20% you got to pay $4,000 a year which comes out to uh, what about $300 a month right hmm. yeah that's such bullshit yeah you know and that doesn't include dental hmm that does not <laughs> include it does not include dental I'm up shit's creek I mean I'll, I'll pay it <laughs> you know I'll, I'll wind up broke but I'll pay it you know I mean it's just just amazing to me just amazing to me. Um, and yeah, I mean, you say Medicare for all. I don't know that Medicare for all. I mean, let's let's not. We, Medicare for all is an easy way of saying it. OK, uh, the better way of saying it, I guess, is single payer health system. Yeah. In other words, hey, you're a citizen in this country. You get sick. You're going to get the best medical care you can possibly get. And the government's going to pay for it. What? Not exactly. You know, be, Whoever heard wanted. of that? Well, England heard of that, and France heard of that, and Germany heard of that, and Denmark heard yeah. of that, and Sweden heard of that. Australia, <clears throat> Japan. Yep. They've all heard of it. But us? Oh, no. No. you got to make insurance companies rich. All they have, to, all the opposition to Medicare for all has to say is that dirty little S word, or worse yet, C word, and a lot of they forgive uh no offense intended, about a lot of the older people, they're assholes like Titan to where you can barely sit, fit a sewing needle through when they hear that dirty little word socialism. Yeah, yeah. Socialism is just a word that people use to scare people not to get things that would help everybody. Well, if, if somebody actually knows what socialism is, I mean, you know, what it, what it would do for them, they wouldn't be against it. But nobody's yeah. ever made it's a good ex going for them in some cases. Yeah, yeah, and it's not communism, folks. Communism is an entirely different system. Okay, socialism yeah. is, 
Socialism <coughs> is like uh, um, the, the bunch of us want to get together and we want to, uh, let's say we want to buy one car that we can all share, <laughs> okay? <laughs> so, yeah. you know, we <coughs> do that. That's what this is all about. I mean, I always ask people, do you have your own fire department? Do you have your own, you know, electricity, department? your own utility? Do you have your own police? army and navy? Like, where do you keep them? I'd be curious to know. Yeah. Because There's so many things that we share because it just makes more sense. You know, do it collectively. Well, I mean, Robert, what? Who? I was just going to say to Robert what he just said there. So. Oddly enough, some uh, mega churches do have their own uh, police department. What was that one in, I don't know, somewhere in the Bible Belt that has their own like police force? I don't doubt that. Well, George Lucas has his own fire department at uh, wow. Skywalker Ranch. And he is so <laughs> nice that he loans it out to the rest of his neighbors to use. If they Socialism. have a fire or something, you know. But, I mean, it's, it's, it's socialism is not a horrible, terrible thing. That's all. Uh, you know, it is simply a matter of, especially when it comes to health. Come on, folks. I mean, if a person can't get access to decent health care, they're going to die. Okay? That's it, plain and simple. Do you want them to die? Is, is that what it's about? If you say, yes, I want them to die, well, then, fuck you. Well, I, guess we'll, I guess we'll let them die. That's the Republican health care plan. Just die. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I actually can have a little more respect for somebody who says that outright and doesn't, like, use code words and dog whistle words. Um, I know it's weird, but, you know, at least they have conviction. And if they live up to that conviction, I have to say, give credit where credit is due. They, uh, to, to, a, to a dark extent, I, 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 res I respect them. If they say, yeah, I want people, I want the, the old and infirm and to uh, die and uh, as proof I don't even have my uh, I don't even pay for my other, my own mother's uh, health care yeah right, or anything right. like that I think they're a piece of shit but at least they're uh, at, least, at least they have conviction but I think it, I think it's just it's terrible it's really terrible and and you know when people need medical care the most is when they're older you know yeah. and with the fact that older people don't necessarily aren't able to get it you know, people say, well, you got Medicare, that's free. No, it's not. I pay uh, about a hundred and some odd dollars a month out of my Social Security for Medicare, right? Are you getting Medicare, Robert? No, not yet. Yes. 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 So you know what I'm talking about. Absolutely. You know? And what do you do for your supplemental? Well, um, my former employee, my school board, um, entitles you when you retire to buy in to the group as mm -hmm. though you were still working. You pay for it, mm -hmm. but it's a reduced rate because you're buying in mass. Mm -hmm. And so um, it's it behooves us to do so, and that serves as our supplemental. Yeah, but still, how much does that cost you? Honestly, um, I'm in charge of investments and that sort of thing around here. My wife handles the insurance. I couldn't quote you a figure. You couldn't quote me a figure. Okay. Well, I'll let you know. You know a lot of those seniors, that's the first time they ever had health insurance is when they finally make it to 65 and get Medicare. It's the truth. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, you know, um, uh, when you're younger, you don't think very much about health costs. Okay. Uh, I don't think I started thinking about health costs till I hit 65, and I, all of a sudden I'm I'm starting to see doctors like I used to see women, you know, uh, one right after the other, and um, uh, it was, uh, uh, you know, it it all changed for me then, and now I have a condition that has to be dealt with on a rather regular basis, you know. I mean, I mean, I I'm probably got rid of the cancer and it's probably gone uh i'm not worried about it uh but nevertheless uh i still need to keep having checkups and you know there might be something else that comes up like that that needs de dealing with and i'm sorry this this uh this thing for for the prostate cancer ran about one hundred and ten thousand dollars. okay 
of which, I mean, the, in Medicare would only pay so much, and then their supplemental would only pay so much. But the fact of the matter was, if I didn't have insurance, that would cost uh, $110,000. Now, if Medicare is paying 80% of it, what is 20% of, of uh, $110,000? Uh, that's about twenty-two thousand dollars that I would owe out of my own pocket. I mean, come on! And we know we know the the hospitals are ginning up the price, so they can they and they know Medicare is going to come back and say, no, 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 we're not going to pay that. So they gin it up a lot so that Medicare will pay so much. But the fact is, if you've got to pay twenty percent because Medicare takes care of four, 80 percent. If you have $100 worth of work done, which is not inconceivable, think about it. There's $20,000 right there. How many of you out there have $20,000 you can pull out of your pocket? You know? Uh, it's, it's Over half of the medical bankruptcies are by people that have health insurance. Yeah. Because of that 20% they have to pay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, you know, it, 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 one way or the other, you know, they're going to get you. And who gets rich? The insurance companies. And the reason they get rich is that prior to, I think, Reagan, uh, insurance companies weren't allowed to be profit-making. They were nonprofit organizations. And they, that's why insurance was, uh, I won't say cheap, but it was certainly better. Uh, and once uh, they said, okay, you can make a profit now. All of a sudden, those prices started skyrocketing. You know, there was a time when you went to a job and they just gave you health insurance because they could afford it as kind of a, a perk for their employees to keep them happy. Now, every company you go to work for, uh, Josh, you, you work at a company, uh, your, your health insurance, I bet you have to pay a premium, don't you? Oh, well, yeah, we got to pay our part, yeah. Yeah, you got to pay your part. There was a time when you didn't have to, when there just was no such thing. You know, they, in fact, they say, come to work for us. We have a great health plan. Yeah, you don't hear that anymore. You hear, come to work for us. Do you have a health plan? Oh, yeah, but you have to buy into it. We pay so yep. much and you pay so much. And that's because insurance companies became profit-making organizations. And, and that's not right. I, you know, if, if a car insurance company wants to be a profit-making corporation, I don't care. But I do care when it comes to health. And, I, you know, and it's terrible. People are dying because they don't have the money to pay for it. Fred, how old are you? I'm 65. You're 65. I'm going to be 66 in a couple of weeks. Yeah, so you know about this with the Medicare. I and do. And I'm, uh, so one, two of the things I'm, I'm wondering about is, yes. well... I should tell you a little bit of background first. Yeah. I just came uh, off of a six-year uh, battle. My wife had cancer, blood cancer. Oh, boy. And she passed away this year. Mm -hmm. But it was six years of uh, uh, hard life, you know? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so now that I hit 65, uh, Medicare to me for $105 a month. Yeah. Is a joke, really. It's not that much money to be covered. Yeah. Plus, you got to add a little more in for the supplemental insurance. I understand that part. But yeah. for the most part, but now I've only been on it for a year, but for the most part, it's uh, much better than what I came from. Right. So when my wife was sick for the six years, we both had insurance, but our insurance costs were up above $6,000 a year. Oh, geez. For each of you or for you together? For the group, for, for yeah. both of us. For yeah. both of you. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and, and was she on uh, Medicare at all or was she? Uh, she was not on Medicare right. and, and she wasn't working either. So, so how much? She like, was on so, my insurance. Okay. So you had your insurance. I don't know who right. that was through, but it was probably through one of the major carriers. Yeah, right? that was through uh, Blue Cross. Blue, Blue Cross, Shield. Blue Shield. Okay. So you now get these bills. Okay. Yes. Uh, and uh, you've then got to pay the bill, so you then send your bill to the insurance company who then sends you a check, right? 
Uh, in some cases, yeah, some it's different sometimes we, if it's a doctor involved or if it's a doctor and a hospital involved, uh-huh. doctor works for the hospital, whatever the case may be. Yeah. But for the most part, you're right. Um, yeah. Uh, and, and so so but we went we had to go for to the best insurance and that's why we were paying. Now, I have no idea how much it was costing to keep her alive for those six years. But yeah. I would imagine that it was not insignificant. It was in the million. Really? Sure. And how sure. much? And how much did you have to put out of pocket? Uh, not as much as you might think. Probably. Yeah. Probably fourteen to twenty thousand dollars. Okay, that was over six years. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. No, well, a little more than that, but yes. I mean. But it's extraordinary. But we had to pay for it through the insurance company. That's where we pay, you know. Yeah, because you had to pay the insurance company every month too. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, so six thousand dollars every year for six years. And that was for the insurance. Thirty six right there. Yeah, that was for the insurance. That's just the insurance. Okay, but then you also had to do some copays, right? You had to. Do you had some, to do copays. Yes. yes. So uh, you spent coinsurance. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that's where where you get the fourteen thousand. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. You know, it, it shouldn't have. Ha- it shouldn't have been. It should have well, been that your you know, wife I, got sick, and they said we're going to do everything we can to keep her yeah. alive. And yeah. uh, you know, when you leave the hospital, there's no place to pay a bill. Well, I I, I would constantly ask people over the six years. I would say, because we have so much trouble going on in our country now. I would say, what what would be the first thing that you want if you were going to start a new country? What's the first thing you would want? You would want medical coverage for all, right? If you're for your people, you know. Yeah. You want you want uh, infrastructure. You want roads built. You want the, those are the important things to keep a, a nation going. But uh, to keep corporations getting richer and richer and richer and people having golden parachutes out of the deal and, and never never having to to uh, pay any uh, you know right. restitution for uh, for stealing from people over all these years yeah you know they get away scot-free so mm. that leads to a lot of problems a lot of problems There's no question about it I mean it's amazing that's why our infrastructure is crumbling because yeah, big corporations are taking most of the money. Robert, you had your hand up. Yeah, I also think I, I, I think a lot about the sort of ghost cohort of people you don't hear about who avoid getting medical care because they simply can't afford to do so, and then wind up with you know major complications that in turn cost even more money. Um, in a, in our country, there's sort of a, a accent on. Um, curing disease as opposed to preventing it also. Um, in other countries, doctors are paid to keep people healthy before yeah, they it, get it, it, Under the British... Like Scandinavian nations. Well, under yeah. the British system, uh, they yeah. pay doctors so much a year, something like $200,000. Not an insignificant amount, but they pay them $200,000. But then they give them bonuses based on the health of their uh, patients. So mm-hmm. there, there, there is an incentive for doctors to keep them healthy, and to and to do preventative medicine, right? Rather than take care of the fire once it's started, you know, try and put it out, uh, and and that's uh, you know. But we, you know, we need something in this country. Am I am, yes. I, am I wrong, Josh, or is it a, is there any reason in the Constitution we couldn't have single payer health care? There's no, no, nothing that would prohibit it. Right, right. Why can't we do it? Why can't? Why does it seem so impossible when England does it, Germany does it, because, France does it, Sweden because. does it, Australia does it? What? Money and politics. Why can't we do it? No, that's not really the whole truth. The whole truth is when we used to be able to do something like that, we were a capitalist plus a democracy, mm. almost a 50-50 kind of balance. Yeah. And it worked beautifully for a while, for a while. But we're no longer that nation. We are now more like 
80 to 90 percent capitalist and 10 to 20 percent democratic. Well, I, I would say that's why it doesn't I, I would, work. I anymore. would say not democratic necessarily, but I would say socialistic because you've got to remember that after. No, socialistic is just kind of creeping well, in. Well, now hold because, on. No, hold on. I'll explain to you yeah, why it's socialistic. Okay. Sure. Uh, when we had the, uh, uh, the uh, uh, Depression, uh, Americans were saying, we got to find a better system than this. This system is not working for us. And a lot of people were thinking, eh, communism, right? <clears throat> so what happened was, to fend off people from getting that notion, uh, Roosevelt came out with a lot of socialistic programs. That's I mean, right. everything he did <clears throat> was basically socialistic. And um, consequently... We had a we had a combination of socialism going with capitalism, and the two together kind of worked, you know. But now we become so almost how what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, we become almost so, purely capitalistic, well, or purely cap so purely capitalistic now yes. that it's impossible. What's killing us? Yeah, uh, uh, Charlie Wallace and then Brian Ludwig. Yes, Charlie. Yeah, Charlie. The, the reason that. Well, I'll tell you what started is when they decided that money was, was speech. But, you know, like yes. citizens. I mean, that's because all the politicians have to raise a ton of money in order to get elected. And who's paying the money? And that's whose priorities get paid are the ones who are paying the money. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the average person can't donate $10 million dollars. In, in, in some kind of pact to a, a, the elect to some senator or governor or whatever. Yeah. So the people that can do that, mm -hmm. and they don't want single payer because the healthcare companies are the ones, a big part of the ones that are doing it, so we don't get single payer. Yeah. Brian? Because they bought off all the politicians. Brian? Uh, uh, Charlie basically took, took my thunder, but yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. Uh, Kevin, exactly. Kevin, I know that you have health problems. I don't think we need to uh, argue against that, right? Uh, what do you do to take care of your medical bills? Well, I'm actually one of the lucky ones. I got, I got Medicare plus I'm on my wife's, uh, my wife's uh, insurance. Turn, turn your mic up a little bit. Your mic's a little low. Uh, let me switch it around here. But I'm on my wife's insurance with Medicare. Mm -hmm. I got Medicare, and then my wife's insurance is backing it up. So I don't see bills. Okay. Me uh, either. And, and she, how did she get that medical? Is she working? No, I have Medicare. You have Medicare, and what does she have? And she has, she works. So she, she works. buys her insurance at work. Okay. So I'm on her insurance. She takes care of the other 20%. Oh, I, oh, she takes care of the other 20% that Medicare yeah, that's, does. Yeah, that's basically the supplement. <laughs> okay. Because, see, my wife, if you work in a company, I think, that has less than 10 employees, uh, you have to go to Medicare. If your wife, say, like Marjorie's company had, like, 20 people there or something like that, maybe it's more. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Do you know what it is, Robert? Medicare is your primary. No, whether no. you want. Everybody no, has to go I, to Medicare. No, no, you, there is no, no excuses. No, no I, yeah, know this, I know this to be not true. Okay, because when I was at Sirius XM, I had an insurance plan through Sirius XM, and Medicare became my secondary. And the reason was the government said that if you had work for a company and they have more than a certain number of people, then you go on their medical plan no matter what age you are, and Medicare is only 20%. The minute yeah. you leave that company, then 80% is Medicare. So, no, you don't, if you, are at a, if you work for a company, you're still working for a company, and I was at, you know, 70, 73, 74, and you're getting insurance through them. Mm -hmm. uh, if they have, if they only had like four people, no, you'd have to, you'd have to take Medicare as your primary. But if 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 they have something like ten or more, or twenty or more, I don't know what the number is, then you have to use their insurance, and your Medicare becomes your secondary. Yeah, and see, that I went I on. I went on early because I was disabled. Okay, 
So yeah, I was on at 62. So. so her insurance takes care of your 20%. Yeah. Okay. What happened with Marjorie at work, her company, they had Oxford, and they only had four people in the office, okay? And they were paying for her $20,000 a year. And what I got out of that was bo both of us, because we're both on Medicare, they just paid our supplementary. Where everybody else in the office had paid their insurance, okay? And we felt that Oxford was really ripping off her company. And um, Marjorie went to them and said, well, why don't you give us a supplementary? And they said, no, we don't sell that. We don't have that. Not for you guys. Uh, so you got to pay the 20000 and use that as your supplementary or not. So that's when we went over to SAG-AFTRA, who came up with this beautiful plan for like $2,100 a year. And Marjorie said to her company, would you rather, would you like to save uh, $18,000 a year? And they went, sure enough. And we, uh, they decided they would pay our, our you know, the money. But I, but I understand what, what uh, I'm sorry, I don't remember what your name, Fred. Uh, I understand yeah. what he was what he was doing because before I got laid off from my job, that's exactly what I was doing. I was paying six thousand dollars a year mm -hmm. for insurance. Yeah, yeah. for yeah. my family. Yeah. So uh, yeah, another thing on top of that then comes the drug costs. Oh yeah, which yeah. is the highest in this nation than anywhere else in the world. Well, I had a great there's drug. There's no need for that either. Uh, uh, under my old SAG, well, after it was a... the high cost of the insurance because. Each year, and I worked for a Fortune 250 company, a huge company, and each year they would come to you and say, well, this year you're going to pay, you know, in the beginning it was 68%. They were, you know, we were going to have to cover, or they were going to cover, and then all of a sudden it was 70%, they were gonna, then yeah. it was 72%. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the, other, yeah. the other trick of the insurance companies is... Uh, the deductibles keep going up. Yeah, yeah that's what I meant. Yeah, the deductibles uh, the, would go up. And, and then the, the price of the insurance up. per year goes yeah. up as well. Yeah, they give you this well, percentage. It's like a double. This yeah, is what double, we're going to uh, cover ramp. this year. Yeah. This is what we're going to cover this year. And yeah. each time it would go up, you know, less yeah. and less. Yeah. Your side would go up and up. Yeah, so this kind of stuff doesn't happen as much in... Uh, so they're, they're not covering as much. The so where, you know, where is where does the government step in and say this is unacceptable behavior? Obamacare. That's where it stepped that's, in. Yeah, that was the first. But it thing. got squashed. That's what they were trying to do. Yeah, but Obamacare, Obamacare doesn't really work because he, he could never get full throated uh, single payer health care going. He just couldn't. They wouldn't. They, no, they, they, fell they, short. Right. Party was it against was, him on that. It, yeah. It almost became a competitive thing right. where the you know the, it was competition to where how much more money can the company make by cutting the insurance. Yeah. You know they make more money yeah. if they're not paying as much as the insurance, and then they dump that on the employee. Yeah. And then they cut out more employee, you know, but, options. But again, I go. So they had ten different options. Then all of a sudden they're cutting out Kaiser. And they're cutting out this one, and they're cutting out this one, and they're pulling in some HMO that's really cheap. That's and then they a grand capitalistic uh, formula. Yeah, you know? yeah. All these crazy formulas that they have. Yeah. Yeah. It, it was a competition thing, which, which made the company, the corporation that was you were working for, made them more money because they weren't putting it out for insurance. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. Uh, so, I, again, I, I get back to the original question, and that is, why can't we do it here? What is the, what is the problem? Because the politicians have to do it, and they're bought by the health insurance company. Could it be? Could it be that it's the same reason we had a COVID problem? The people are selfish in this country, and they don't see an advantage in helping other people and, and batching together. And, you know, wear mm -hmm. a mask, give us free insurance. You know, for, uh, free health care. Uh, yes, uh, Brian. Yeah, what kills me regarding uh, <clears throat> uh, Fred's uh, remark about uh, drug costs, what kills me is that the from the other side, they're playing. What they'll say is, uh, "Well, we need we need those uh, we need to put those extra costs in play to help pay for our research and development." And <laughs> it makes me laugh my ass off because I think I may have ruined a, what could have been a good friendship with somebody who lives near me, because uh, when he told me that his aunt works 
for an ins- a health insurance company. I saw pictures of her like in skiing gear, going all these kind of outings, okay. wooing people. That my blood was starting to boil, and I even made the remark, you know, you you know, dude, I think she works. I think she uh, kind of is enabling this uh, social this parasite that that is this insurance company she works for. And uh, he didn't like hearing that. And uh, yeah, I, I kind of I had to leave. Yeah. I, my 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 temper was just. <laughs> but none of this, none of this, you know, all, any solutions you and I uh, might come up with in this discussion doesn't do me any good. I still got to find some insurance to take care of that twenty percent. And uh, do I go with this thing, which it looks like my union has now just hired somebody to be a go between between the insurance companies and me. Because it it looks like I'm going to have to get my Medicare supplemental from one person. I'm going to have to get my dental from another. I'm going to have to get my prescriptions from yet another. I mean, I got it all under one roof before. I want it all under one roof now. And I wish I had enough money to sue my fucking union for doing this to us. You know, they're trying that. What you're talking about, Alex, they're trying that for the first time this year. What? Trying to get it all under one roof for people who uh, have Medicare. Yeah, well, they want, should, to, get, they want to get the supplemental, the, the Medicare, the dental, yeah, and the vision. I mean, I love the hearing the, now I love, too. I love the prescription. They're, they're willing to pay a little bit for hearing aids now too. Yeah, I, the drug problem that I that we had, the prescription drug thing, cut down my costs on prescription drugs by by two thirds, because I we were using a thing called, uh, uh, oh, what's it called? I can't remember the company. Uh, no. No, it was another company. Uh, they're the Express big, uh, Scripts. Is Express Scripts. They're now Optum. Oh, oh they're not, they are now Optum? Yeah. Uh, or did they buy I've Optum? They've Optum for a decade. Because Optum, yeah. uh, they, Express Scripts was the biggest uh, prescription drug uh, insurer in the country. Those so, folks are now Optum, and Optum had their own thing going on. Yeah. There is, uh, I don't think there is an Express Scripts by itself anymore. Well, there is. You can go online. It's there. Yeah, it, it, but it's yeah. it's still through Optum's yeah. people, I'm pretty yeah. sure. But that was great. I love that. You know, I got all my drugs, and I it, every month it came out to like $125 a month, where before it was costing me, uh, every three months, where it was costing me about $125 every month. You know, so I just see my my insurance rates going through the roof, you know. Maybe I just won't get it and I'll just let myself die. You know? Well, they'll arrest you first. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They'll arrest me first? Yeah, because you have to have insurance. Oh, I see. By law. It, well, not anymore because the Supreme Court ruled that out. I didn't know that. Yeah. yeah. When Trump came in, they sued and, and the Supreme Court couple of years ago finally said no you cannot have a mandate you can't make people buy health insurance hmm. yeah. that was that was a killer in my opinion because you didn't have uh, uh the public option Rahm Emanuel made sure to that but also the yeah. republicans as well um exactly. and uh among which include Marco Rubio doing away with the risk corridors but uh yeah that killed me because that told me and I had this happen to me where I owed the IRS because I couldn't, uh, I, I didn't really work. That was a bad year. 2018 was a bad year. And I owed the IRS because uh, uh, I did not have health insurance. And so I had a tax placed on me, a member of the working poor. And I'm not the only one who's had this happen to. Yep. Yeah. Talk about austerity. That there is austerity. Wow. But you were supposed to get a supplement and the Republicans killed that supplement. Yeah, that's the we blame the Republicans. I blame both sides, Charlie. I blame okay, the bill should have, bill should have been written so they didn't have an option. But okay, okay, re- 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 ready for major socialistic Alex here. <laughs> uh, my solution to the problem: they go, where are we going to get the money from? Uh, more tax on the corporations. Yeah. Bezos can afford it. Because that, they're the really they're thing. the ones who are benefiting from this uh, this this whole system anyway, they're yeah. making a fortune, and they're not giving anything back. Let them give back. That's how we're going to pay for it. You, you know, know, if I could say something. Yeah. One of one of the uh, things that I also learned over the past few years is that 
people used to hate doctors because they made so much money. The doctors don't make as much no, money today as they used to, yeah. because the insurance companies now control the doctors. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, absolutely control them. So now, when you see a doctor in the hospital, for instance, like when my wife was in there, four or five or six doctors would come in each day. Now I'm exaggerating, just to say hello, how are you? I look in your eye, oh, you still have cancer, leave the room, and they would bill the insurance company for that. Well, I'll tell you, I, in a way, I feel sorry for the doctors. I know this is going to sound... Oh, it, I understand. You know, yeah. because doctors actually are, are making less than they ever have in the past. In fact, yeah. so, so many doctors I know have left their private practice and gone to work for an HMO for a yearly salary. Right. Uh, um, I lost one very good doctor to Mount Sinai. I went over there so she could make maybe $200,000 a year and just have a salary coming in all the time and yeah. and none of the problems, although I hear those doctors are even having problems so, now, too. So the, so the private doctors, to me, yeah. well, the, the private doctors, yeah. uh, they can't afford the mal insurance practice yeah. insurance anymore. And, and by the way, one that's why they had to go to the corporate uh, hospitals. One other yeah. factor. Make that 200000 If you've gone to into, into a doctor's office, go look at how many people are in the billing department. Yeah. They got maybe five, six people in the billing department. And I asked my doctor once, why yeah. so many people? They said, you have yeah. no idea how hard it is to get money out of these insurance companies. And insurance companies hire hire groups of people to sit down and try to find loopholes so they don't have to yep. pay you. Yep, yep. You know, I mean, come on. I, I sent you a check every month for that insurance. Right, now you pay don't want to fuck, pay me back. Pay the fuck yeah. up. You know, don't tell me, oh, that's not covered. What? Yeah. Cancer is not covered? I'm sorry. Wait, I'm telling you, they hire staffs of people to go through your bill and see, yeah. you know, how they well, can get around it. When you were a teenager. Yeah. Pre-existing condition. Yeah. 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 So that's yeah. what I mean by capitalism kind of swallowing democracy. Well, pre-existing conditions don't hold up anymore, do they? Well, they will if they end up getting rid of Obamacare. Yeah. yeah. Trump's in court right now that, trying to do it. Right. Yeah. Well, on another subject, let's get off of uh, off of medical, because this yeah, it's is making me sick. It's, it's making me sick too. <laughs> you know. Yeah. I mean, um, like I said, my blood was boiling before. It just makes me <laughs> thank, thank God I got my cancer before my insurance company, my yeah, my union decided to change its insurance situation. I mean, just uh, I want to I want to kill it. Sounds them. like a lovely organization. I wish I, I wish I had a lawyer. I would sue them for doing this. I just there's something got to be something inherently wrong, where uh, you took a perfectly good insur you know, insurance for a company. They said, "Well, we weren't making money on it." And I'm thinking <laughs> that wasn't the idea. The idea was you've got a union membership and you're getting them the best possible deal, and you not don't want to make a profit. Eh, fuck it, you know. Yeah. Um, our president doesn't seem to like the military. It turns out. Never did. <laughs> this is the this, got it in there. Yeah, this is the latest thing he said. Bone spurs. Yeah, that he that that anybody who goes into the military is a loser. Is that one of yep. the things he said? Yep. Yeah. And, he said that. Yeah, and that. Yep, it, oh my that. God. And, and that anybody gets killed in a war, uh, pretty much as he he didn't put it this way, but deserves it. You know. Wow. Uh, he, uh, he supposedly said this when he went to France and they were doing that D-Day thing and he was supposed to go to a cemetery and he didn't yeah. want to go. Because it was raining. Uh, because it was that raining was and he did, it, and what it would do to his hair. That was the best part, right? Hair, I thought he would melt. Like the wick. Like yeah. the wicked witch. Yeah, right. I'm burning, I'm burning. I'm <laughs> melting. Uh, anyway, the, the, <laughs> point, the point is that... Uh, that uh, uh, he, of course, denies it emphatically, but, you know, come on. He's a liar, right? So this is something that was said in private? This is something that was said. Yeah. It was said in semi-private because there were about three people confirming he said it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. More than two people who are of no relation to you say something about yourself. And, Chances and, are it's and, true. And it was, in yeah. the, it was in the Atlantic Monthly, which now Trump says is a loser magazine. 
and is going to be out of business within a year, which is not true. Supposedly, they're quite solvent. Uh, and uh, they wrote this article, and they had, and, and oddly enough, Fox, who usually sides with Trump, said, yeah, this is true. We, we checked the story out. It's true. Wow. Uh, There's a security correspondent. Huh? Their security correspondent said that it was indeed true. That it was indeed Fox. true. and they, Fox. Yeah, and it was vetted through three other people. Yeah. Supposedly one of which was Kelly, is one of the people that yeah, heard it. Kelly. Yeah, and they think that he's the one that leaked it. Yes, uh, Brian. You know, on, on the subject, on the broader subject of how we always talk about how things weren't that bad under the W. Bush administration versus now, mm -hmm. um, I think that it's, it's funny to me that the most controversial thing said about the uh, people who serve in the uh, armed forces by a politician specifically running for president, as I recall, in 2004, was said by uh, John. We thought this was controversial when John Kerry said that it was a draft on poor people, which to an extent is true, to a great extent yeah. is true, because a lot of the people who are who, who enlist, they're not drafted, but they enlist. They might as well be drafted because they have no other economic prospects. They use that as, as, a, as a way out of their economic situation. Yeah. And this asshole comes and just, you know, it, it, it blows it out of the water with his remarks. Yeah. Um, you know, we did away with the draft because the draft did not bring about very much goodwill. But at least uh, there was, I think, a kind of equity in that. Uh, but in the case of the military now, it's where you go if you, you know, if you can't get out of your dire financial poverty stricken area. Uh, and there may not be a correlation, but I think it's kind of weird. I'm not suggesting there is a correlation, not to sound like a conspiracy theory nutcase or anything, but I think it's kind of weird. To me, it seems that uh, when the draft was done away with, the nation started to become deindustrialized. Uh, and you know, mm -hmm. steel mill started closing. That was part Pittsburgh. of the plan. Yeah, I'm wondering if it. Yeah, it sounds like so a that people would be game. poor and have the only job they could get was to be in the military, or some under the form of uh, public service that would entail yeah. great risk to them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah. sounds weird. Yeah. So I mean, but but uh, I, I'm just wondering if how this is going to resound with his base. You know, is, is his base going to react to this, or are they nothing going to say nothing changes his base? Nothing. Of course, they're cultists. It's it's fake news, right? Uh, uh, that's all they are. Uh, uh, he's losing the support in the military. In the military. Yeah, but what would you know? It's like you know, they used to say in the uh, at a, a used car lot, "What would it take for me to get you into this car?" I would love to say to some of these people, what would it take for me, what would he need to do for you to finally give up on him? Yeah. God I knows mean, he's done it all, you know. Daughters and mothers in front of him, I'm guessing. That would, that's maybe what it takes. What's Unless, that? Of course, I say, to, you know, facetiously answer your question there, Alex, uh, it may take Trump actually physically coming to their houses and fucking their daughters and mothers and grandmothers in front of them. Yeah. Yeah. Rape stop. And that might not even do it because they might run uh, out and say, guess who just fucked my daughter? Yeah. You know. Yes. The magic sperm. Yes, Jeff. Why was it that uh, senior uh, uh, Bush lost? The economy. <laughs> Some say it was Ross Perot, too, drawing too many votes away from the Republican. Oh, yeah. That, that would definitely but, help. It, 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 Ross Perot definitely was the spoiler in that election. There was no question about it. And in spite of the fact that by the time uh, the election came around, Ross Perot had lost a lot of his following because of one crazy antic after another, not the least of which was quitting the race and then coming back into it. Um, and that, am I right about that, uh, Josh? Do I have the, the thing pretty well down about Perot? I mean, what what were you saying about... Uh, Perot, Perot pretty much, he, he was a spoiler, but he wasn't as much of a spoiler as he could have been because he just, you know, uh, um, uh, he, he did, I think at one point said, I'm quitting the race, and he got out of the race. 
And then at the last minute, I think he jumped back in or something like that. But in any event, he was the spoiler. I mean, Bush could have very well won that election if Perot wasn't involved in it. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I think he seemed to, I seem to remember him doing that at the time. I mean, Perot's deal was, I mean, there, he was kind of in that populist cycle that I've said before, you know, runs around every so many odd number of years. And, you know, people that are really into that, and there is always a small percentage of people that are definitely into that, you know, voted for him. And those messages seem to work with people from time to time. Uh, some people always believe in it, and then you just happen to catch it in the right cycle, like, you know, we did last time, and that sort of message, you know, is able to prevail. And at the time, you know, Perot kind of took that vote. And, uh, but, it, you know, it, it didn't went out over, you know, the, the Clinton message. I mean, that was you know, kind of liberalism's long march from FDR to, to Clinton or whatever, mm -hmm. you know, kind of ended there. But I mean, that I think that was Perot's deal more than anything. It's just, you know, Perot was almost like a, you know, it was like on a Trump message before Trump, you know, it just was a little bit more coherent, I suppose. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think Perot actually, even if you didn't agree with him, I think he actually had educated himself on the things that he believed in. I mean, you know, he was a charts and graphs guy, right? I mean, he got made fun of for his, you know, pointy stick or whatever and his charts and graphs. I mean, you know, I don't think Trump could even draw a pike. <laughs> you know? I mean, you know, so... <laughs> Well, but, the trouble is, if he drew a pie, just, a, 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 if he drew a pie chart, he'd eat it before he showed it to you. <laughs> yeah, um, uh, they're always it, yeah. I mean, Perot was that kind of candidate who comes along and people go, "Hey, you know, uh, I want to uh, like like a Brian Ludwig." How'd you feel about Perot? Or you weren't around for that, were you? That was right. that was before I was a voting age. Yeah, yeah. I thought it was. Yeah, I always thought, as I got older, I thought it was kind of interesting. Yeah, but you've always, been, you, you've always been the guy who wants to vote for the third party, you know, for the other guy. Well, I started know. off as an independent, then I went to a Republican, then I was briefly a Libertarian, and then I went back, then I went to being a Democrat. Still, I'm a Democrat. Yeah. But uh, after this election, so that there aren't any, you know, why like, all this, why all this confusion? Back to being an independent. Brian, why all this confusion? What can I do to get you into this car? I mean, uh, why all that confusion? I was a Republican, and then I was an Independent, and then I was a Democrat, and then I was, uh, I was a, uh, you know. Uh, well, it's called getting. It's called uh, growing up, aging, looking at the world through a different lens as you age. Because I have uh, always, all my life, been a Democrat. Well, I also probably uh, probably won't surprise you to know that uh, I come. From from a family with a rather eclectic array of political views and beliefs and convictions. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, and, and, but I, I like and, it. And I, let me answer your question. Yeah. What will it take to get me into the car, into the Biden car? Yeah. B-Y-E-D dash I-N, Biden car. Mm -hmm. Buy into Biden. Biden. the Biden. Buy into Biden. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Buy into Biden. Yeah. Um, single pair. Yeah. Otherwise, he can go fuck himself. <laughs> they both can go fuck themselves. They can go fuck each other. Now, I'd love to see that, too. Yeah, however, the problem with coming out, there's a difference between being for single payer and coming out for it. That when you're running for president, I don't think that's the kind of thing you come out for. Well, I'm and, a single issue. Then well, I guess wait a minute. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. What you do is you go to single payer once you get elected. <laughs> you know what I'm well, saying? And then we you didn't can do have what, it with eight years of Obama. Huh? Uh, well, Obama did the, Obama did the best he could, and you remember before her, him, Hillary Clinton was flogging it uh, in the Clinton administration. She was put in charge of it, and uh, she was looking for the plan. Nobody has been able to get that plan across, and part of it I'm is. Not Hmm? I'm not convinced that the Democratic Party is my friend, at least not fully. Well, no, but uh, uh, let me put it this way. They may not be your friend, but y the Republicans are definitely your enemy. 
Well, yeah. okay. Yeah. And and the point is, is that we somehow have to uh, be able to get these people to say, okay, let's go for it now. But but the uh, people are single issue voters about abortion uh, on the right. You know, single voter issues on cultural issues. So too am I rapidly growing into becoming a single issue voter on the left in regards to uh, Medicare for all. Well, uh, I, I, nobody's uh, people. What? We're single issue abortion people. Really? Died COVID. A good riddance. Thin the herd, as far as I'm concerned. That's what I'm saying. But the, the, the people like that, they're, they're killing themselves. Let them. <laughs> yeah, but the point is that you know that I'm I, uh, I I just I don't know. I just I just don't understand. I think it. it I, I I was making a point earlier, and I guess I didn't get to express it completely, and that was that the whole question of why we don't have single payer in this country is the same reason people, some people don't wear masks in this country. The, wearing a mask has even become an issue, is pure and utter selfishness, that we can't think Great in choice. terms of the person that, you know, we live next door to and, and what's good for them. Robert, would you agree with that? that it's, it's an endemic American trait that we're selfish. I, I don't know either way. I, I don't. I really don't. I think everybody. I mean, first rule of economics, isn't it that everybody acts in, on behalf of their own utility, right? So, I don't know that selfish. Selfish has come to mean I give a shit about me and not you. Um, I'm not sure you can't be selfish to some extent without also caring about. Well, your if man. if you want to be completely selfish, you should be for single payer. Right? Yeah. Because you want it for you. Hey, who, like who, it. Anybody here not want free medical care? Is there anybody in this group? You know? We all. Uh, yeah. I, yes. I would like this. I would like to ask Brian a question just to see what his take on this is. Brian, um, you'll agree that there are more than one issue out there that we need work on, okay? Like COVID, the economy, unemployment, you know, like, I mean, global warming, so forth. Isn't there a chance that being a single issue voter makes politicians not say anything definitive at all for fear that they're gonna either lose you or Joe Blow because he's pro-life, or Tom Smith because he's a Green Party issue. I already have an answer for you. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, please. Here's the answer. Biden has already been on record as saying he would veto Medicare for all legislation. If his own party, people like Ocasio-Cortez or Bernie Sanders were to put it on this table, ready ready for his signature. He said he, he would veto it. He not only said this once, he said this twice, and he's on the record as having said this. So right. there's that. But also what I want to I want to go on further a l- little further in mm-hmm. that uh, you know you all, most of you all are, you know, of, of the boomer generation, my father's generation, my mother's generation, you all remember when the country was industrialized for greater to for for, for, for better. And you mm-hmm. all were alive and adults when it became de industrialized. My generation and the generation below me, Generation Z, we grew up in a rapidly deindustrializing uh, country, and we grew up being promised this and that if we went to school, for example, if we went to college. Fuck the trades. We were told, fuck the trades. You're, you're more evolved than that. But now, you know, now that we're in our 20s and in our 30s, some of us, and even in our early 40s. Uh, we're finding that uh, not only do we have a useless piece of paper with a useless uh, college degree and a useless major, but we're also uh, got all kinds of uh, school debt. And now, you know, we we have uh, no no real prospects, no real job prospects, as well as uh, 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 a shit ton of uh, medical debt for those of us who aren't as healthy as Okay, but in a way, I think maybe you just made my point, because if Biden hadn't have said those things and played the straight and narrow and just given everyone a bunch of mumbo jumbo, you wouldn't dislike him as much as you do. Do you see what I mean? Like, in a way, we're kind of creating a system where it doesn't behoove a politician to take a stand on anything because, you know, you've got your own personal checklist 
Well, he's for the, you know, like uh, defunding the police. Okay, I'm in favor of that. He's for, you know, blah, blah, blah. I'm in favor. Oh, he's pro-life. Well, that checks him off. Well, then the politician's in a position where it behooves him not to take a stand on anything. And then you and I will complain that what we're getting from the two major parties is nothing but pablum. Uh, you know what I mean? In a way, we kind of created that. Well, let me, I, I, I think there's a point. There's a point that Robert is making here, Brian, and I have to kind of agree with it. And that is, you have to take the totality of the person. There may be individual things that you don't like. Uh, you know, sure, I could say, hey, he doesn't want Medicare for all. Screw him. But he does want a bunch of other things that I do want. So what do I do? Such as, you know, such I'm, as, but there's no such thing as the perfect candidate. Oh, he wants what, to, what does he want that you, what does he want that you, you are in agreement with because all i hear from the democratic side are a bunch of platitudes and feel good speeches oh vote for us because at the very least we're not trump well you're the people and the establishment are republicans well i think he Trump wants to them. grab he wants to grab a hold of the covid crisis by the neck yeah. and do something about it that's that's one good thing a you national know. mask mandate which i'm in agreement with Here's the thing, though. No, but, um, but all I'm saying, all, all I think that Robert is trying to say is that you're holding, you're, you're really holding his feet to the flame on one issue. Damn right. On one issue. Right on. on one issue. Well, but what about all the other issue, stuff? What about all the other stuff? That one issue blossoms into other issues, a multitude of other issues. Like what? Like job security. Like job security. Well, uh, well, income how, security. How do you if guarantee you can, people you, job security? Well, for one thing, if you're the employer, um, then you don't have to worry about paying uh, exorbitant uh, fees for medical coverage for your employees. You're back to and the then, same issue. What's that? You're back to the same issue, medical coverage. Yeah. I'm saying that there are yeah. 10, 20 issues. It blossoms. It, that, that one issue is like a spinal column. Do you, to, believe, uh, do you, believe, do you believe in Biden's stand on race relations? Rhetoric-wise, of course I do. Okay. Well... You, you ha you're going to get but that, but maybe, the maybe you won't get the. Maybe you won't. record proves that he is a. He's pretty much a hypocrite. His voting record proves that. Yes. Uh, uh, well, who's uh, voting did, record doesn't uh, prove? Kevin, did you have your hand up? Bernie Sanders. Oh, okay. You had your hand up though, didn't maybe. you, Robert? Yes, I agree. Robert. Hmm? You had your hand up there? No, I did not. Oh, you did not. I have my hand up. Oh, okay. Oh. I was trying to figure out who uh, whose <laughs> hand I saw up. Yes, yeah. Charlie. Yeah, I was going to say, we know for a fact that either Trump is going to be elected in November or Biden. There's nobody else that has even a prayer of a chance. So there's, you also know that Trump is going to be even worse than Biden on health, on health mm -hmm. insurance. He wants to get rid of the ACA altogether. He wants to bring back pre-existing conditions where you can't get health insurance no matter what. So, I mean. There's your choice, Brian, is what he's saying. Well, maybe it takes another spin through hell for us to come to. Well, I, 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 you know. 180,000 people died because of this last spin through hell. And I don't know about you, but I don't want to go through another spin through hell. I'm sorry. I, I can't. I, I, I don't want it. I can't take it. And, uh, Who does? But when you got a candidate that says nothing will fundamentally change, well, what hasn't changed pre-2016 is what got us Trump to begin with. And all purposes and concerns, it looks like we may be getting four more years of Trump, whether I decide to vote for Biden or not. Okay. Well, your, your vote isn't going to change much of anything, so have, no, have at it. Uh, but, hey, there, there's, the, there's the oh, theme song. Know matter or change things. Yeah, everybody, I want you to all have a nice uh, Labor Day weekend. Yeah. Okay? And then, you. you know, well, hey, hey, go do what you got to do. Uh, by the way, nice having you here, Fred. Would you come back again, please? Oh, absolutely, Now yes. that you know yes. how to do it, Fred, please do it. Okay? Yes. Yes, I do. And, uh, you know, I, I, I want to say one more thing to you, Alex. Yes. Um, I know you, you that stick about how you jump on people who used to listen to you when you were uh, yeah. when I was younger or you were younger. But would you rather have me listen to uh, a Barry Grant or a uh... <laughs> uh, refresh? Uh, uh, yeah, huh? yeah, yeah. Well, 
Uh, well, I knew Grant. So Take it as a compliment. <laughs> I knew Grant, and I liked him as a person. But that's another story. I'll no, I, yeah, I, think I meant his political uh, yeah. beliefs. Anyway, thank you very much, uh, Fred. Thank you very much to Robert. Thank you, thank Jeff. You. Appreciate it, Josh. Appreciate it, Kevin. Appreciate it, Brian. And appreciate it uh, to Charlie Wallace. All of you, have a nice, nice uh, weekend off. I'll be here on, on Monday afternoon. I think I'm going to still do my 4 o'clock thing just for the hell of it on the Labor Day and see if anybody wants to do it with me. So you might join us for that. Otherwise, goodbye, everybody. I'll see you later. Okay, there they go. That's our citizen panel, ladies and gentlemen. And another citizen panel will be forming right after this with Jack Bishop as he does a program, yes, called The Intersection. And he'll be taking your calls. In the meantime... I'm out of here. I'll see you again. Uh, I'll see you maybe Monday at 4, but I'll see you definitely Tuesday night at 1030 Eastern Daylight Time. Same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? And be safe out there and wear a mask and don't get close to somebody at the beach this weekend, okay? Socially distant. Socially distant.